Hey guys, Ivan here, and in this video we have a couple of very interesting bodybuilding updates. We are starting though with Derek Lansford, who is in his off-season. He is like 7-8 weeks deep into his off-season, and the reason why he is in the off-season, why he is not competing and doing the Iron Classic like the majority of the top Olympians this year, is health. He says that's his reason, that's why he's not going to be competing this year at the Arnold Classic. What does that mean? Is it unhealthy for him to diet again? Of course not. It means he doesn't want to use the pre-contest stack. And the other guys will kind of have to. And it's definitely not the healthiest thing to do, especially if they had to qualify for the Mr. Olympia. Guys like, for example, Samson Dauda. So he competed at the Arnold last year in Boston Pro, and then from there he went to Mr. Olympia prep, and now he's competing again doing the Arnold Classic. So whatever he's doing, I don't know what he's doing, but I'm sure he's using stuff that he wouldn't use in the offseason. And I'm saying all this because Derek, right now, might be completely off or might be on TRT, or might be using something that's not that toxic, you know, a little bit more mild stuff, or simply long, long ester kind of stuff, instead of using like the most toxic stuff, I'm sure you know what I'm talking about, the stuff that's gonna make you peak, and Derek doesn't have to peak now, he needs to peak later in the year, so right now he's probably on low dose, or on something that is not very toxic, so he's definitely healthier than all of those guys doing the Arnold Classic. And so this is what he looks like right now, and I have no idea, but I'm assuming he is on TRT or completely off of everything on like HCG, stuff like that, because he did say uh, he wants to work on his health, and I I'm assuming he, he did that. I don't know, maybe he's gonna try and make his wife pregnant as well, so I'm guessing he's, uh, he's not on a lot of stuff, that's for sure. And he does look pretty damn impressive for somebody who is in that stage. But I mean, sure, it hasn't really been that long since the Mr. Olympia, so he's still kind of rebounding. And this period, like two months after the show, you just look amazing. You have the best pumps, you're still very lean, but you're just full. And that's like the best time you're gonna look ever, really, in the gym. Like those two months after after the Mr. Olympia, after the show actually, not Mr. Olympia necessarily. And it's been I think less than two months, so I think in like a month or two from now, if he keeps doing what he was doing so far, he's gonna start to digress with his look, but I think at that point he's gonna jump on something and try to progress, try to grow, but I gotta say right now he does look pretty freaking massive. He does look really massive, especially for somebody who was a 212 competitor up until recently. And, you know, we have been kind of watching him in the in the past offseason, when we were really uncertain whether he's gonna do the 212 or the Open, and he kind of looked like he could do both, probably. Like, he could probably suffer down, suffer like crazy, like lose some muscle and actually squeak into the 212, you know, but... Right now, does he look like that? I wouldn't say so, I don't think so. Right now, I think he looks like a proper open bodybuilder. He looks huge. He does look very, very massive right now. So, like, his 212 days are over, and he's gonna have an entire off-season. So next time we see him on stage, on that Mr. Olympia stage, he's going to be really freaking big, and potentially, he's gonna be winning that Mr. Olympia title. Now, as far as him having an advantage over the other guys, I mean, the question is, is he gonna uh, progress more than the other guys, than Nick Walker, than Samson Dauda, Andrew Jack, and some others? I, I don't think so. I really don't think so. I think the only benefit that he's gonna get from this is his health. He is not really pushing his health like the other guys are, but really, like, it's been, how many? Six, seven, eight weeks since the Mr. Olympia, and there are only four more weeks left until the Arnold, so, like, it's not too big of an advantage. Like, Arnold was very close to the Mr. Olympia, so the other guys aren't really losing that much time. Also, some of them will benefit from competing again. Some of them need to work on their muscle maturity. Guys like Andrew, like Samson, like Nick as well. You know, those guys need more preps, more shows, and that's how they will mature. And I think Derek needs the same thing. He needs to compete more often to gain that maturity. So I think these guys will just have an advantage 
over Derek and one of them will be $300,000 richer than Derek. So I, I, the only thing that Derek is going to gain from this is he is not going to be pushing his health as much. But I don't know how good of a decision that is really because uh, let me actually show you what Chad Nichols had to say on this. Okay, not necessarily on this, but it's kind of related to what I was saying. Uh, he says, I wanted to post an update of William Bonac, since I have gotten so many messages asking how he's doing. William is on target to be bigger and better than he was last year at the Arnold and Boston Pro. We had his blood work ran before confirming to do the Arnold and everything looked great, but we also have to realize that he, w that he just finished competing at the Olympia and the simple fact is everybody that did the Olympia and it's now doing the Arnold is a little bit up. In a perfect world, everybody would take months off, but we don't live in a perfect world. And there is a very short window to make money in this industry. So the key is to be very smart with whatever you're doing and make sure that your body is under as little stress as possible to ensure the healthiest path at the stage. That being said, William is still uh, on target to look crazy in a few weeks. So what Chad Nichols is saying here basically is... In a perfect world, everybody would take those months off. Everybody would, and it makes complete sense. I mean, why would anybody push their body just after they're done prepping for the biggest show of the year when they definitely push things to the max? Nobody would do that unless there is an opportunity to make a lot of money. And William Bonek is one of those guys that can actually win this show, potentially. It's not super likely, let's be honest. There is Nick Walker, there is Big Ramy competing, uh, Samson Dauda, Andrew Jack, so Sean Clarita. So it's going to be really tough for William to win, but there is a possibility. And even if he doesn't place first, he can still win some money. So he decided to do it. And he also probably wanted a redemption because Mr. Olympia wasn't really his best look. So it makes perfect sense, like there is an opportunity, a huge opportunity, and I think Derek should have taken it as well. Jay Cutler also commented on this situation, and I think his point of view makes a lot of sense. He says Derek is not a guy that's driven by money. Yet, once you start winning the big ones, unfortunately, it is about the money. I experienced this. He also says they don't have a taste of it yet. They might not be as motivated as us seasoned guys. And so I have to completely agree with Jay Cutler. This just makes a lot of sense. But it is what it is. Derek decided not to do it. If he decided now to compete, it would be too late. There are only four more weeks left until the Arnold. And right now, Derek is looking amazing. And I'm sure he's going to make a ton of progress for this year's Mr. Olympia. And potentially... He will win that show, what do you guys think? Alright, next we have this new photo of Patrick Moore. It is kind of circling the internet, the social media. Now, Patrick Moore is somebody who really shocked the world back in 2019, where he really brought great conditioning and he looked like potential, I don't know, let's say Mr. Olympia winner. Like, he looked like somebody who was promising a lot. However, in the next couple of shows, in the next couple of years, he just looked... Uh, I wouldn't say the same, but probably worse. He never really brought the same level of conditioning and he never really grew any muscle. And now, 2023 came four years after the Mr. Olympia. And as you can see, I mean, he posted a lot of updates. And this is the most recent one. And in this one, he does look kind of impressive. I mean, those arms are really big, especially those triceps. Like, those triceps are hanging like crazy. However, I still don't think he's gonna do very well. Now, sure, he has some really strong points, like his waistline is really freaking tiny, and those arms are really big, especially compared to his waist size. So he does have some really nice features. Also his back, for example, take a look at this. Some of the guys competing against Patrick at this Arnold Classic do not have this kind of detail, do not have this complete back development for example back he has details in pretty much every body part what he doesn't have is thickness what do i mean when i say thickness i'm talking about chest to back thickness and like hamstring side leg you know when he turns to the side you can see that he is not really a mass monster so it doesn't really matter how much detail he has there are some classic guys who have crazy details 
I mean, bro, come on, take a look at this. Take a look at freaking Brian Hainsley and the, the amount of details in his back. It's ridiculous. It's insane. It's so detailed. Not just the back, but like the arms, the shoulders, the, the glutes and hamstrings. Like he's detailed, 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 shredded, but he's a classy guy. He's not a mass monster. And if you compared him to the top open guys, he wouldn't stand a chance, man. Conditioning doesn't really mean that much in the open division. For example, Akim Williams, like this pose, these two poses are called side tricep and side chest, but not with Akim. When Akim does them, they're called side leg poses because his legs are showing insane amount of thickness. Uh, I, I like to say uh, leg height because look at the quads, how high they are. I mean, how, how big those quads are, are. Like It's insane. Like the thickness in the legs and also in the upper body. I mean, look at the chest to back thickness. Like, hey, this is a big guy, this is a big freaking bodybuilder, and I don't care how much detail Patrick Moore has, he cannot hang with these boys, unless they are completely off with conditioning, and then uh, I guess he can beat them based on that, if he is shredded and they are like completely off, but if they are in okay shape, he's not beating them. He also posted this, so the difference in his back between 2021 and now, 2023, and yeah, sure, he does look bigger in the, in the bottom photo, the photo from now, but he's obviously fatter, so it's not only muscle, there is more fat, and it's of course not the same lighting, not the same angle, not, maybe it's the same angle, but it's not on the same spot, so you can't really compare this. Uh, does he seem bigger? Yeah, sure, a little bit, but again, who knows what it's gonna look like when he's conditioned finally. And I don't know, it seems like he's running late with conditioning. I think he should be leaner at this point than four weeks out. So, I, I mean, he's going to be ready, but is he going to be completely shredded like he was in 2019? I don't think we're going to even see that. I think Patrick Moore is going to be uh, just as, as big as ever and probably with a little bit worse conditioning in 2019. So, in my estimate, I think he's still going to place that last at this show. Alright, the next one is kind of interesting, at least for me. I don't know how many of you guys are Fuad Abiyad fans, how many of you are watching his podcast. You guys know I'm crazy about that podcast, like I watched all the episodes and some of them I watched multiple times, especially the ones with Luke Sando. I watched them like three or four times by now. Every time I'm prepping for a show and I'm doing cardio, I, I listen to those podcasts and they are freaking amazing. I think Fuad is doing an amazing job in bodybuilding. I think he's like currently the father, the current father of bodybuilding. But other than that, back before he started the podcast and his YouTube channel, I was a big fan of his physique. He had a really freaky physique. This guy was humongous at one point. Like, he was really freaking massive. And, you know, he didn't have those crazy genetics like, I don't know, Phil Heath or, or Nick Walker. He had more of, like, you know, those human-looking genetics. He just grew like crazy. But he still looked like a freaking human being. When you look at, for example, I don't know, let's say Phil Heath. You look at his physique and you're like, no matter how much I grow, even if they altered my DNA and they prevented me from producing myostatin so I can grow indefinitely, it doesn't matter how much I grow, I don't have this structure, this kind of shape, I can never look like Phil Heath. But when you look at Fuad Abiyar at his biggest, he does look like a normal human just with a ton of muscle. So I found that very motivating, but now Fuad Abiyar is retired. He is no longer doing bodybuilding, he will never compete again, as he says. Uh, so he stopped uh, using uh, gear and he is not really training very much, very hard, as he says. He's not really on his diet, he's eating like once or twice a day, he's eating a lot of junk food, and we haven't really seen his physique in a long, long time, and this is the closest thing that we get to a physique update of Fuad Abiyad, so I wanted to share it with you guys. So as you can see, he's still holding on to a lot of muscle, and he says he's 260. So for a guy of his height, 260, like he's a lot, he's still a big guy, he's still holding on to a lot of muscle, uh, from what I know, he's doing like, he's not even doing proper TRT, he's doing like one shot a month or something like that, so considering the whole situation and everything, he's actually holding on to more muscle than I expected. Of course, he's not looking anything like he used to look back when he was uh, full-blown, when he was a proper bodybuilder, but considering the situation and what he's doing, he's still holding on to a lot of tissue, 
And if he wanted to come back, if he was willing to do something crazy, he would probably be able to bring all that muscle back real quickly. However, as you can see right now, he's in Dubai, he's doing uh, stem cell treatment, uh, he's trying to fix his kidneys, which are not really in the best state, and so that's why he went to Dubai. He also did some PRP for his quad tendon that he tore, and as you can see here, he's doing this uh, detox. So he's in Dubai right now trying to fix his uh, health issues. Uh, his physique, as you can see, looks like this right now. And that's gonna do it for this video, guys. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. And for more bodybuilding content like this, subscribe to my channel, guys. Thank you so much for watching. All the best and bye-bye.